start. I'm recording. Oh, I guess I'm spotlighted. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this special presentation from Science Tellers uh, at the West Orange Library. If you're a fan of science, don't forget to miss or don't forget to tune in. You don't want to miss weekly super science on Facebook Live. And in about a month, on August 24th, I believe, we're going to have a Zoom interactive super science where we get to see each other and all do an experiment together. Don't miss that. A lot of exciting stuff coming up in August. You can email us youth at, that's Y-O-U-T-H at westorangelibrary.org with any questions and to get the scoop with everything happening in August, including a brand new bilingual story walk at Ridgeway Park. All right, without further ado, ooh, yes, Cuckoo the book. We'll turn it over to Science Tellers. Well, thank you so much, Miss Jane. Hi, I'm Conrad. I'm here from Science Tellers, and I'm so excited that I get to share our story with you. Uh, now, during our story today, we are going to meet two kids named Henry and Beth and they get mixed up with a dragon as they try to save the entire kingdom. Now, during our show, I may stop from time to time because I wanna know what you're thinking because we're going to be making some scientific guesses. Now, when we make a scientific guess, we call that a hypothesis, and I'll need your help for that. Now, during our show, you might have some questions, and at the end of our show here, I will be here to answer a few of them when there's time. And of course, if you have any scientific questions, you can go to your librarians because they will point you in the right direction to find some amazing books to answer not just your questions about science, but anything else you can imagine. All right, my friends, we're going to jump. Actually, we get to meet someone very, very special. He's also a science teller. His name is Rick, and he's going to start us off with our story. And I'll see you in just a little bit. All right, Rick, take us away. And let's see Dragons, Return of the Ice Sorceress. Here we go. Hi, I'm Ricky, and I'm a science teller. A science teller is part scientist, part story teller. That's right, when you mix them together, you get a science teller. And that's someone who uses really cool experiments to tell an amazing story. That's right, you guys have been good at this. Today's story is called Dragons. Return of the Ice Sorceress. Let's get started. A long, long, long time ago, there was a kingdom. In this kingdom, there was a castle. In this castle, there were two kids. Their names were Henry and Beth. Henry and Beth, however, were not supposed to be in the castle. But one of their favorite things to do was to sneak into places where they shouldn't be. Suddenly, they heard voices. Someone was coming. They started to run. They ran down the hall and wham, crashed into someone. They looked up thinking that it might be the castle guard, but they were wrong. It wasn't the castle guard at all. It was the last person they wanted to run into. Freeze! What are you doing in my castle? You two are in big trouble. Now come with me. Before the king could grab them, Henry and Beth ran, pushing past the king, ran down another long hall, and ran outside. Woo, that was a close call. Henry and Beth started running back to the village. They were almost home when suddenly, look out! They dove to the ground just in time as something flew through the air right over their heads and disappeared into the forest. Wait a minute, wait a minute! In the story, Henry and Beth saw something flying above their heads. Would you like to see what 
it look like? Right here, I have a cooler. Inside this cooler, I have, whoa, <laughs> whoa, something cold. It's so cold, I have to wear these gloves in order to touch it. In this cooler, I have dry ice. Now, is dry ice hot or cold? Oh. It's cold. It's so cold, it's 109 degrees below zero. And that's why I have to wear these gloves in order to touch it. Everyone, stick out your hand. Close your eyes. Imagine you're holding an ice cube. What starts happening to that ice cube? It's melting, that's right. That means it's turning from a solid into a liquid. Okay, everyone, open your eyes. Hmm. Does dry ice melt? No. Does it turn wet like an ice cube? No. That's why it's called dry ice. Now, when you heat up dry ice, it turns from a solid, not into a liquid, but into a... Gas. Now, what's it called when something turns from a solid into a gas? Evaporation? No. No, that's from a liquid to a gas. Is it called condensation? No. No, that's from a gas to a liquid. Is it called procrastination? No, I'll tell you what that means tomorrow. <laughs> when a solid turns into a gas, it's called Sublimation. Right here, I have one of my oldest pieces of equipment. It's called a film canister. I'm going to put a piece of dry ice in this film canister and it will start to sublimate or turn from a solid into a <laughs> gas. Even though we can't see it, matter is gas. A matter is anything that takes up space. Now what takes up more space? A solid or a gas? A gas, a gas will expand and take up as much space as it can. Now when I put the dry ice in the film canister and put the lid on top, what do you think is gonna happen? It's time to do our scientific guess, which is also called a hypothesis. All right, my friends, I need your help. Together, we are going to make a hypothesis. But first things first, put your hands out like this. Give it a try. Good. Now put your hands together and squeeze tight. Excellent. Say solid. Good. Now put your hands up and down like waves in the ocean. Say liquid. Perfect. Now spread out your arms as far as you can. Further. Further. Stretch. Say gas. Good. Hands together. Squeeze tight. Solid up and down like waves, liquid, spread out, gas, good, hands down, solids, liquids, and gases, those are our three types of matter. Right now, that piece of dry ice is a solid, but it wants to change into a gas through sublimation. Rick's going to take that piece of dry ice and put it into the film canister and put the top and close everything together. As it changes from a solid into a gas, that gas is going to stretch out and it's going to push against every part of that container. But when there's no room left, it'll push that container up into the air. Hmm. But how long do you think that's going to take? Do you think it's going to take 10 seconds or 30 seconds or a minute? For our friends who are watching live, you have a poll on your screen where you can answer the question, how long do you think it's gonna take? Or you can send it to me through the chat. I wanna know what you're thinking. Ooh, all right, maybe a minute, that's very good. Could be 30 seconds, could be a minute, could be, maybe it's five seconds or maybe it's even longer. Could it be an hour? Ooh, <laughs> let's see. My friends, that would be pretty amazing. <laughs> let's move that out of the way. Very good. Now, my friends, in science, 
it is okay if we don't know something. That's fine. Scientists don't know things, but we have to make our best guess. And that guess is called our hypothesis. Once we have that, that guess, we're gonna put it to the test. So we're gonna jump back into the lab to see what happens when Rick takes that piece of dry ice and puts it into the film canister. And we'll see how many seconds it takes before it blasts off <laughs> into the air. I'm excited to see what happens. Here we go. All right, Rick, let's see what happens. Let's go. So excited. Okay. All right. Now let's see what happens. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's level made. That is awesome. Wow. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I love it. All right. Now I'm going to put the lid on top. Let's see how many seconds it takes. Here we go. Now. Whoa! Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh. Did you see that? Wow! That was awesome! Whoa! Whoa! Wow! That was amazing! When we put the lid on top, we trapped the gas inside. The gas kept expanding, trying to find space which in turn built up pressure inside of the film canister, which made it pop up into the air. And that's what it looked like when Henry and Beth saw something flying over their heads. Thank you, Rick. They didn't see what flew overhead, but Beth had an idea. Maybe that was the evil eye sorceress. But Henry laughed. That's just an old story people tell to scare their kids. She's not real. Hmm. Now what would you do? A, would you run home? Or B, would you fall away into the forest? My friends, I want you to think about what you would do if you were Henry and Beth. Of these two choices, would you run home or would you go into the forest? I want you to decide and lock your choice in your mind. Now, let's see what they decide to do. Here we go. Come on, let's go see what it was. Henry grabbed Beth by the arm and together they ran towards the forest. Meanwhile, high atop the castle tower, someone was watching them. It's those two pesky kids. They're heading into the forest. I'll stop them. The guard raced down the long hall, jumped onto his horse. And rode to the edge of the forest. <laughs> right. 
Right there, far in the distance. Running through the trees, he spotted Henry and Beth. The guards started to chase them. Henry and Beth started to run. They were fast, but the guard's horse was faster. Henry and Beth need our help. Put your hands up and be like the trees in the forest. Arms up, everyone. He got closer and closer. The hoofbeats got louder and louder. He rode alongside them. Just as he reached out, about to grab them, they dove off the path and disappeared from sight. Good job. Arms down. Hmm? Hmm. Hey! Hey! He looked right. Then he looked left. They're behind the tree. The guard saw something. Yes. But it wasn't Henry and Beth. Nope. It wasn't a person at all. It was a mysterious white cloud of fog. He felt very cold. Something wasn't right. He turned and rode off in the other direction. It was filling the entire forest. Henry and Beth peeked out from behind the old tree they were hiding behind. The guard was gone. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! In this story, Henry and Beth saw something in the forest. It was a mysterious white cloud of... Fog! That's right! We're going to do an experiment to show you what that looked like. Do you remember what it's called when a solid turns into a gas? Sublimation. Right here, I have a graduated cylinder filled with water. I'm going to add dry ice to that water. What do you think is going to happen? It's time. It's time to make our scientific guess, also called a hypothesis. All right, my friends, I need your help. We're going to create another guess, another hypothesis. Now, we know that the dry ice doesn't like to stay a solid. It likes to change through sublimation. And instead of being a solid, it likes to turn into a gas. Now, when Rick puts the, yeah, the piece of dry ice into that cylinder, we should get a cloud of fog. But how big do you think that cloud's going to be? Do you think that it's going to fill the tube halfway? Do you think that it's going to fill the tube all the way? Do you think that it's going to overflow the tube? What do you think will happen? Hmm. It's a tough decision. Ooh, my friend Jane thinks it's going to overflow. That's a good hypothesis. Oh, <laughs> some good guesses here, my friends. Now, my friends, remember, as scientists, it's okay if we don't disagree. Some of our friends think that the tube will be filled halfway. Some of the two friends think that it'll overflow. It's all right that we don't agree as scientists. What matters is we take our guess and we put it to the test. So we're gonna jump back into the lab to see what happens with that piece of dry ice. Does it stay what it is? Does it stay solid? Does it become a gas? Does it become a cloud that fills the entire room? Ooh, that would be pretty amazing. But the only way to know if we're right, the only way to know what happens is if we put it to the test and do our experiment. So we're gonna jump back in and see what happens. All right, Rick, I'm ready. Here we go. Oh, let's see what happens, Frank. All right. It's time to test out our theory. Let's see what happens. Whoa. We put the dry ice into water. The water makes the dry ice heat up and sublimate even faster. That allows us to see all the gas, just like a fog or a Cloud, that's right. We can actually, whoa, pour it in our hands. Look at that. Whoa. My friends, you were We can even pour it in our lab coats. I can even pour it on you. Oh, okay, whoa, whoa, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> And this is what it looked like 
when Henry and Beth saw the mysterious white fog. Thanks, buddy. Good job with your The guard was gone, but that's when they saw it. Right there, the fog. It was coming towards them. What would you do? Would you A, stay in the foggy forest? Or would you B, warn the king? Mm. What would you do, my friends? Think about it. Quickly, Henry and Beth ran back towards the castle to warn the king. Run! Run! Henry and Beth ran fast as they could. Keep going! They saw the castle in the distance. You can do it! <laughs> Finally, they made it out of the forest. <laughs> but they were too late. Suddenly, the trumpets blared. The castle gates blew open. And the knights marched out. Don't worry, the knights will save the day. But nobody could have known what was going to happen next. The evil eye sorceress stomped her feet. That's not good. She clapped her hands. That's not good. She snapped her fingers. With a wave of the hand and flick of the wrist, she released bubbles of fog that rained down from the sky. When the bubbles popped, they released ice cold fog that froze the night solid. Wait a minute, wait a minute. In the story, the evil ice sorceress stomps her feet. She claps her hands and she snaps her fingers, that's right. When she does, she makes bubbles of fog. We're gonna do an experiment to show you exactly what that looked like. Right here, I have a flask. In my flask is water. Now we're gonna add a chemical to this water. So, we're gonna add a piece of dry ice to the soapy filled water. What do you think is gonna happen? It's time for our scientific guess also known as a hypothesis. Oh. <laughs> All right, my friends, it's time to make another hypothesis. What do you think is going to happen with that dry ice and that soapy water? Do you think we're going to create a cloud or do you think we might create something else? Hmm. Oh, what if we could get bubbles? But what kind of bubbles do you think we would get? Do you think we would get a big bubble? Or do you think we would get a bunch of little bubbles? My friends who are watching live, you can put it in the chat and tell me what you're thinking. I want to know what your hypothesis is. If your hypothesis is something else, you can share that with me as well. Oh, we have a friend who thinks we're going to get one big bubble. <gasps> Wouldn't that be amazing? It would look like a crystal ball. That would be awesome. My friend Jane also thinks that we're going to get big bubbles. Oh, some of our friends think that we're going to get little bubbles. That's okay, too. Now, my friends, it's okay if we don't agree as scientists. That's all right. But what we have to do is put our guests to the test. Because when we test our hypothesis, we learn something new. And as long as we're learning new things, we are succeeding as scientists, even if we're right or wrong. As long as we learn something new, we're on the right track. Ooh. What if we get a bubble so big that it fills up Rick's entire laboratory and then it pops? 
Ooh, that would be a little messy, but it would be pretty cool. The only way to find out if we're right is to go back into the lab and see what happens. All right, my friends, let's see what goes on with science teller Rick, and let's see what kind of bubbles we're about to make. Here we go. All right, Rick, lights, camera, action. Oh. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Oh yeah. Here we go. There's the soap. All right. Now it's time to add the dry ice. Here we go. Oh. Whoa! Oh, oh my gosh. gosh! Look at that! Look at all those tiny bubbles! Mm. Oh, oh, oh. You can see the fog inside of the bubbles! It's incredible. The dry ice supplemented. It turned from a solid into a gas. The gas is filling up the soap. And that's why we're getting so many bubbles. Lots and lots of bubbles. This is really cool. When the bubbles pop, you can see the fog inside of an escape. It's really cool. And this is what it looked like when the evil ice sorceress made bubbles of fog. Thank you. <laughs> but it wasn't the nights that she wanted. Right there, she found who she was looking for. Slowly, she walked towards the king. She stomped her feet. That's not good. She clapped her hands. That's not good. She snapped her fingers. And with a wave of the hand and flick of the wrist, she released a giant bubble of fog. The bubble popped, releasing an ice cold fog that froze the king solid. Then, ever so slowly, the evil ice sorceress turned around and looked out into the distance. With a flash of her icy blue eyes, she caught Henry and Beth watching her. Henry, Beth, get out of there! Run! They started to run! They arrived at a sign with two locations, fiery mountains or frozen swamp. What would you do? Would you A, run to the fiery mountains, or would you B, Head to the frozen swamp. Think about what you would do, my friends. Let's see what they decide. The fiery mountain. Henry and Beth reached the base of the fiery mountains. There it was said the dragons lived. A dragon was Henry and Beth's only hope to stop the evil ice sorceress. They climbed up, up, and up the narrow rocky path winding their way higher and higher into the mountains. With every step they took, they felt the ground getting warmer beneath their feet. As they got closer, they saw it was the opening to a cave. What would you do? Would you A, keep climbing, or B, go into the cave? My friends, where do you think they could find the dragon? Inside the cave or at the top of the mountain? Hmm, think about what you would do. Let's see what Henry and Beth decide. They 
inside the cave. But Beth doesn't look too sure. With whatever courage they had left, Henry and Beth stepped inside of the cave. At once they heard a deafening roar. <laughs> they looked up. They couldn't believe their eyes. They were standing face to face with a dragon. Two children in my mountain cave. What are you doing here? Okay, everybody. Henry and Beth needs our help again, okay? On three, yell, the evil ice sorceress is back, okay? You ready? One, two, three. The evil ice Bah, bah. Roar. My fire should be able to melt. Uh... Arms up. Woo! The dragon flew up in the air. Henry and Beth felt the powerful wind in their face and hair. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. In this story, Henry and Beth flew through the air with the dragon. That's right. While they were flying through the air, they felt how strong the wind was. We're gonna do an experiment to show you what that was like. Now, what's all around us that we need to breathe? <sighs> air. Now, is air a solid, a liquid, or a gas? That's right. Air is made out of tiny little particles, too small for us to see. But if we can't see it, how do we know it exists? Because we can feel it. We can also see the effects that it has on other objects. Right here, I have a leaf blower. The leaf blower sucks air through this end and shoots it out at 140 miles an hour. Oh. Paper. Let's try the leaf blower with this toilet paper. What do you think is going to happen? It's time. It's time for us to make our scientific guess, also called a hypothesis. All right, my friends, I want to know what you think. Now, we've crept in to the dragon's lair. And hopefully with the help of the dragon, we'll be able to defeat the ice sorceress. But what do you think is gonna happen with our leaf blower when it touches that toilet paper? Do you think it's gonna fly through the air? Do you think it's gonna end up on the ground in a, in a great big pile? Do you think that it will explode into a million billion pieces? <laughs> okay, maybe not that one. But I wanna know what you're thinking. My friends who are watching live, you can answer the poll or send me your answer in the comments. I'd love to see it. What do you think is going to happen with that leaf blower and that toilet paper? Is it going to fly through the air? Is it going to not move at all? Is it going to explode? What do you think is going to happen? Because truthfully, anything could happen. As scientists, we don't know, and that's okay. Oh, I have a, we have two votes for flying through the air, three votes, four votes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that is a pretty good hypothesis. Now, my friends, when that fast moving air touches that toilet paper, it could make it move and it could fly through the air. That's a pretty good guess. But my friends, 
I know you have another question in your mind right now. You're asking yourselves, why does Rick have a leaf blower and toilet papers in his laboratory? I know that's what you're thinking. And the answer is, I don't know. But I do know that this is one of my favorite experiments. And I'm so excited that you get to see it with me. All right, let's see what happens. Does the toilet paper see where it is? Does it fly through the air? Does it explode? The only way to find out is to put our guests to the test and learn something new. All right, Rick, let's see what happens. Find out. All right, now it's time to test out our theory. <laughs> <laughs> Fast moving air has lots of energy. When the energy comes into contact with another object, like the toilet paper, it makes the toilet paper fly through the air. And that's what it looked like when Henry and Beth flew through the air with the dragon. Flying through the air, the dragon saw the entire kingdom below. The castle was completely frozen in ice. Right there stood the evil ice sorceress. She was watching. The dragon landed in front of the castle and put Henry and Beth down. I'll be right back. The dragon took a deep breath and released a blast of fire. <laughs> Not even fire can melt me. Oh, no. She stomped her feet. That's not good. She clapped her hands. She snapped her fingers. And with a wave of the hand and a flick of the wrist, she released bubbles of fog that rained down on Henry and Beth. Just when they thought all hope was lost, Henry and Beth heard a sound. The dragon spread its wings wide apart and covered Henry and Beth like a giant umbrella. The bubbles popped, releasing their ice-cold fog that froze the dragon solid. Then the evil ice sorceress rose up into the air and started flying towards them. What would you do? Would you A, face the evil sorceress, or would you B, find a place to hide? My friends, this is a very important question. Henry and Beth, we're gonna use the dragon to save the day, but with no dragon, how are they going to save the kingdom? My friends, think about what you would do. Would you face the sorceress? Or would you come up with a new plan and hide? It's a very tough decision. I'm not sure what they should do. Hmm. And my friends, I hope the kingdom gets saved. And I don't know what's going to happen. Let's keep going. Think about what you would do. And let's see what choice Henry and Beth make. Here we go. Let's see. Henry and Beth started to run. Henry and Beth saw an open window in the castle. They jumped inside. Down, down, down to the coal castle cellar. Everything in the cellar was completely frozen in ice, except for one thing, an old wooden barrel. What do you think's inside? They opened the barrel. It was filled with salt. As they climbed inside the barrel, some salt spilled out onto the ground and it started to melt the ice. Just then someone kicked the door in. I can see you come out of that barrel. She stomped her feet. She clapped her hands. She snapped her fingers. The evil eye sorcerer started to wave her hand. But before the evil eye sorceress could flick her wrist, Henry and Beth had an idea. They reached their hands inside of the barrel, grabbed a handful of salt, 
And on three. One, two, three. They threw it at her. All at once, the salt began to work. The evil ice sorceress broke out in a cold sweat and she watched as the salt melt through her icy skin. With one final shriek, the evil eye sorceress exploded into millions of tiny water droplets that fell like rain. And just like that, the evil eye sorceress was gone. This time, for good. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! In this story, Henry and Beth melted the evil eye sorceress with... So, she exploded into millions of ice droplets. We're gonna do an experiment to show you what that looked like. Okay, everyone, do like this. Okay, do it again. We breathe out CO2 or carbon dioxide. That's the same thing that dry ice is made out of. Dry ice is just the solid form of carbon dioxide. Inside this cartridge is carbon dioxide gas. When we open up this end, carbon dioxide escapes very, very fast. I'm gonna attach it to this tube. And what's inside of this tube? Nothing right now. We're gonna put water inside of the tube. We're going to pull this lever and release the carbon dioxide gas. Now, what do you think's gonna happen? It's time for our scientific guess, also called a hypothesis. All right, my friends, we're gonna make another hypothesis together. Now, with the dungeon completely frozen, Henry and Beth were able to come up with a new plan, and hopefully, and got rid of the ice sorceress, but they did so using some pretty cool science. My friends, Rick has that tube, and inside that tube, there is a bunch of water. When he releases that CO2 gas all at once, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think the water will freeze into a solid block of ice? Do you think it'll evaporate and turn into a gas? Do you think it'll fly through the air and fall down from the sky? I want to know what you think. So lock in your hypothesis into your mind, or if you're watching live, you can answer the poll or put it in the chat and share your hypothesis with me. What do you think is going to happen? Hmm. Now, if the water turns into a gas, we know that would be evaporation. If it froze and turned into a solid, we'd have a solid block of ice. And if the water fell down from the sky, well, that'd kind of be like precipitation when water falls from our sky. What do you think is going to happen? Hmm. This is a tough one. Now, my friends, if water does fly through the air, I hope Rick does have an umbrella because that could get pretty messy. And he's wearing his gloves so things shouldn't freeze. Hmm. Oh, I have a friend who thinks it's going to fall like rain. That's very good. All right, my friends, that's a bunch of different hypotheses. Let's see. So, have a couple for turning into a gas, a couple for it will freeze, and some for that it will fall like rain. That's great. Now, my friends, remember, it's all right if we don't, if we don't agree. We just have to put our test to the guest and learn something new. So, we're going to go into the lab, and I hope Rick has an umbrella because if it does fall like rain, I hope he doesn't get soaking wet. We'll see. Here we go. All right, Rick. Oh, one more thing. We'll need your help to count down from 10. So make sure you have your fingers up because I'm going to need your help in just a second. Here we go. All right, Rick. Let's do it. <laughs> OK, well, let's see what's going to happen. Let's see if your hypothesis is right. Now, let's count down from 10. Are you ready? Yes. Let's do it. Hands up. 10. Nine. No. Nine. Eight. Eight. Seven. Seven. Six. Five. Five. Four. Three. Two. Two. One. Two.
was you. Oops. And that's what it looked like when the evil ice sorceress exploded into thousands of little tiny droplets of water. Henry and Beth got right to work. They dragged the barrel outside the castle. Lifted it high over their heads and dumped salt all over the dragon. All they could do now was wait and wait. It's working! And the salt began to melt the ice. The dragon started to move. It flapped its giant wings and flew into the air. Flying over the kingdom, the dragon saw everything still covered in ice. It took a deep breath and released a blast of fire. As the ice melted and the kingdom thawed out, a huge cloud of fog formed over the land. Wait a minute, wait a minute. At the end of the story, the dragon took a deep breath and let out a blast of fire. That's right. The fire melted all the ice and left a big cloud of fog. This is an experiment to show you what that looked like. Right here, I have a bucket filled with hot water. Right here, I have dry ice. What do you think is going to happen when I put the dry ice inside of the bucket of hot water? It's time to make our scientific guess, also called a hypothesis. Come on, Rick. <laughs> I almost said the word hypothesis. That's oh. That's All right, my friends, we get to make one last hypothesis for our story together, and I need your help. Now, all we know that dry ice likes to change from a solid into a gas, but that bucket is filled with really warm water. When we mix those two things together, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think that the water will freeze like an ice cube? Do you think that the dry ice is just going to float in the water and do nothing? Or do you think the dry ice will sublimate and turn from a solid into a gas? I want to know what you're thinking. If you're watching live, you can put your hypothesis in the poll or put it in the comments. That way you can share it with me and all of your friends. Hmm. Now we've used a little bit of dry ice the entire show, but this is a giant bucket filled with dry ice. And that's a big bucket of water. Ooh. Oh, I have a friend who thinks maybe it'll turn into a gas. Maybe it'll float in the water. Maybe the water will freeze. That dry ice is very cold. It's 109 degrees below zero. Maybe it'll turn into a cloud. Those are really good guesses. Oh my goodness. Excellent work, my friends. My friends, we have a bunch of different hypotheses, some in the poll, some in the chat, and that is okay. It's all right if we disagree. Now, we're going to learn something new. We're going to jump back into the lab. And after that, we get to hear the conclusion or end of our story. But once that's done, don't go anywhere. Because I want to teach you a very special science experiment that you can do at home. That's right, is use the stuff that you have in your house. That way you can do even more science with your grown-ups. And we'll get to that experiment right after we hear the end of our story and see our last big experiment. Let's see what happens with that cooler filled with dry ice and that big bucket filled with all those, with all that warm water. All right, my friends. Ooh, maybe the cloud we make will fill the Rick's entire lab. Maybe we'll get a block of ice that's so big it looks like an iceberg. I don't know, but that's okay. We're going to test our guests and learn something new. Here we go. All right, Rick. We're ready. Wow. Sorry. Okay. Are you guys ready? Yep. I need your help counting down. Okay. Nine. 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 Eight. Eight. Seven. Six. 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 Five. Five. <laughs> you see that? That's the ice is sublimating very fast because it's in hot water. That's 
awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. Whoa, 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 careful. whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, It's sublimating at such a high rate. That is one big cloud. And that's that exactly what it looked like when the kingdom started to thaw out again. The dragon waved goodbye to Henry and Beth and headed back to her home in the mountains. Everything returned to normal. Suddenly, someone called for Henry and Beth. It was the king. Then they remembered that they were in trouble for sneaking around the castle. The king called for him again. This time, there was nowhere to hide. Henry, Beth, I've been looking everywhere for you. Because of what you did, our kingdom is safe. All hail Henry and Beth, and your dragon friend too. And from now on, you are allowed to sneak around the castle whenever you'd like. You did a good job. <laughs> and that concludes Dragons, Return of the Ice Sorcerers. Did you have a good time? My friends, I hope you had as much fun as I did. Wasn't our story awesome? Henry and Beth saved the day. They made friends with the dragon, and the ice sorceress is gone. But we're not done yet, because I want to teach you a science experiment that you can do at home. And it uses some things that we heard about during our story. Now, my friends, for this experiment, you'll need a few things, and you can find them around your house. But you do need something first before you do any science experiment. At home, you need something that starts with a parent, an adult, or a grown up. That's right. Your grown up will help you get everything you need. Right now, your grown up is the person in your house who looks a little bit tired. <laughs> They'll help you get everything you need for this experiment. The first thing you're going to need is a cup or a bowl. I'm gonna use this plastic dish right here. The next thing you need is a little bit of H2O. Now that's what we call water. I have some water in a water bottle right here. Tap water is just fine. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. Now, in our story, we had an ice sorceress. So for this experiment, we are going to use some ice cubes. I have a bunch of ice cubes in my thermos right here. They're little tiny ones like that. Those will be perfect. Now, we're gonna use another chemical, a chemical that we heard about during our story, and that chemical is salt. Just regular table salt, the stuff you would put in your salt shaker, not the stuff that you have to grind up. So once you have your salt, and you need one more thing. The last thing you're going to need is a piece of string. I'm gonna use this kitchen twine or bailing twine, and it's actually not just one string. It's actually, oh, look at this. It's a bunch of little strings all twisted together. That's all you need for this experiment. Your bowl, water, ice, salt, and a piece of string. Once you have all of those things together, you can do something pretty cool. Now, to make sure you get a close-up view of what's about to happen, I have our science cam, which has everything we need right over here. All right, my friends, we have our science camera all set up. We have our little bowl right here. Now, inside the bowl, we're going to place our ice cubes. I'm gonna fill up the bowl about halfway. So we dump our ice in like that. And now we need to add the water. I'm gonna fill up the bowl about halfway again. That way the ice cubes can float around inside and sort of swim around together. Add a little bit of water. Perfect. So now our ice cubes can swirl around a little bit. That's perfect. The next step is to take our piece of string and we're gonna dunk it into the water like this. And make sure the string gets nice and wet. All right, now we have to take the string out of the water. Excellent. And now we're gonna take that string and place it on top of the ice cubes that are floating in our water. 
I'm going to go in a little swirl, a little spiral pattern, so it touches a bunch of the ice cubes. That becomes important in just a second. Let's go like this, this. That's perfect. Excellent. Our string is on top of the ice cubes. The last step is to take our salt, our regular table salt, and sprinkle it on top of the string, on top of the ice cubes. I'll put that right there so you can see exactly what happens. Sprinkle that on top like this. Ooh. All right. That is perfect. And we have to let this sit for about 45 seconds to a minute, but that's okay. Because while our things are mixing together, we have to make a hypothesis. Now, we have salt, ice, water, and a piece of string all inside of our bowl. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think that the ice cubes are going to melt and sink to the bottom of the dish? Do you think that the string will snap and break into a bunch of little pieces? Do you think that the ice cube and the string are going to stick together and be frozen? What do you think is going to happen? I want you to make your guess. For our friends who are watching live, you can put it in the chat or you can send, uh, you can go ahead and put it in the poll. That way you can share a hypothesis with me. But my friends, it's important that we lock our hypothesis in. This is what makes it a true science experiment. Ooh. I have a friend who thinks it's going to stick to the string. That's very good. It could stick together. Of another one who thinks it's going to stick together. I have someone who thinks it's going to snap and break the string. Ooh, that's exciting. Now, my friends, when you're at home, you can try different things, but we're going to see our experiment and we'll talk about how to change it up when we're at home in just a second. It's been about the amount of time we need. We're going to go back to our science camera and see what happened to our string and our ice cubes. Here we go. Ooh, all right, my friends. Everything looks the same. Our ice cubes are still on top of the, the water. Let's see what happens. Did we get anything? Whoa, 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 look at that. <laughs> wow. Not only did our ice cubes freeze to the string, they also froze to each other and made a giant iceberg. Wow. <laughs> My friends, let's talk about why that works. That works because of the chemical we used. We used salt because salt does something very, very special. Henry and Beth discovered that in our story. They used the salt to melt the ice sorceress, and that's exactly what happened in our experiment. The salt helped melt the ice. When our string is sitting on top of our ice cube and we add the salt, the ice cube melts just a little bit. And that string that's on top sinks down into the ice cube. And when everything refreezes, they are stuck together. Not only does it happen to the string, it happens to the ice cubes. When the ice cubes touch, they melt and freeze together because salt melts the ice. That's why in the winter time, when it's snowing, we use salt on the roads because it melts the ice and snow to make them safe for us to drive on. So my friends, if you're going to try this at home, get your bowl, water, ice cubes, string, and of course, some salt, and you can do some really cool science at home. But you don't have to stop there. We can change something about our experiment. Does it always work with salt? Could it work with something else? Could it work with pepper or something like that? Well, that's a good question to ask. And you can try this experiment and change different things to see what the result's going to be. That's what scientists do all the time. We ask a question, we make our guess, that's a hypothesis, then we test our guess, and then we learn something new. And we do that over and over and over again to learn about the world around us. But my friends, I have a secret. Come close. Ready? In this world, you can learn anything you want to. And you have access to the coolest place to learn anything you want. And that's your library. Your library has books of all sorts of things. You can do science experiments. You can go on adventures with dragons. There are games you can play, crafts you can make, and adventures you can take. And the coolest thing is you get to take those things home for free. All you need is your library card. And if you don't have one, I bet you know a grown-up who does. But if they don't have one, talk to our awesome librarians. Of course, they will help you get one if you need one. But your library isn't just books at your library. There's also resources online. You have audiobooks and ebooks and all sorts of fun things that you can check out right when you're at home, just through your library's website. And if you need help navigating any of that, 
your librarians over at the West Orange Public Library are there to help you because they want you to learn so much. Speaking of learning so much, my friends, there's something really cool going on right now, summer reading. If you're not signed up for summer reading, you need to do because it is the coolest thing. And you can do that right on your website. You can log your books online and I hear the more books you read, the more things you learn, the potential for more prizes there are. And I hear you can get some cool things from your librarian because they want you to learn new things and have fun. So if you're not signed up for summer reading, and I know you're reading books anyway, make sure you are. That way you can have some fun with your library this summer. All right, my friends, I hope you had fun today. I know I did. I'm going to turn it back to your librarians and they are going to say goodbye. But this has been so much fun. If you do that science experiment we talked about at home, you can, of course, share it with your librarians. They want to see what you're doing at home. And you can share it with us at Science Tellers using the hashtag Science Tellers. We love to see what science you're doing at home. All right, my friends, my name's Conrad from Science Tellers. And now I'm going to turn it back over to your librarians to say goodbye. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful summer. And I hope you learn, learn a whole bunch and read some great books. All right, back to your librarians. And we're going to go to Miss Jane. Here we go. Hi, thanks everyone so much for tuning in. I hope you learned a lot about science and this will be available online to share with any friends that might have missed out with tonight's, uh, with, on tonight's video. Uh, great, and Miss Olga, if you want to say anything, go for it. I want, to, I want to say thank you, Conrad. Thank you so much. And we will also have the longer version of the Ice Sorceress Meets the Dragon on our website. Thank you. Watch us again, and we'll see you at the library. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>